Hi everyone, this is Ivarani, working as assistant professor in the Department of Computer Science and Engineering, Dr. MGR Educational and Research Institute. Now, I'm going to explain about the greedy technique in design and analysis of algorithms. First, let us see the introduction about the greedy technique. This greedy technique is an algorithm design technique focusing on producing an optimal solution for a given problem. This approach suggests constructing the solution through a sequence of steps, each step expanding a partially constructed solution which is obtained so far until a complete solution to the problem is reached. There are several choices that must be made in greedy technique, feasible, locally optimal and irrevocable. Choice is said to be feasible when it satisfies the problems constraint. And it is said to be locally optimal when the best local choice among all feasible choices available on that particular step. And it is irrevocable. It means once the decision is made, it cannot be changed on the subsequent steps of the greedy algorithm. There are several greedy algorithms. Among that, we are going to deal about Prim's algorithm, Kriskal's algorithm, Distra's algorithm, and Huffman trees. The first two algorithms, Prim's and Kriskal's, are the classic algorithms which is used to solve the minimum spanning tree problem. Distra's algorithm, it is another greedy technique algorithm which is used to find the shortest path in a weighted graph. And Huffman trees is an important data compression method which can be interpreted as an application of greedy technique. So before seeing Prim's and Kriskal's algorithm, we must know what is minimum spanning tree. So for that, we should know the definition for a spanning tree. Spanning tree of an undirected connected graph is its connected acyclic subgraph that contains all the vertices of the graph. It means that we will be provided with an undirected connected graph and aim is to obtain a subgraph which is acyclic and it should cover all the vertices. If such a graph has weights assigned to its edges, then it is possible to obtain a minimum spanning tree. So minimum spanning tree is a spanning tree with minimum weight. Generally, the weight of a tree is defined as the sum of the weights of all its edges. The minimum spanning tree problem is therefore the problem of finding a minimum spanning tree for a given weighted connected graph. So let us see an example for the minimum spanning tree. So here you could find four different graphs. The first one is the given graph which is containing the edges with the vertices A, B, C and D and the second, third and fourth graph shows the spanning tree that are obtained from the first graph. And you could see that the first graph is having a cycle but the second, third and fourth diagram does not contain any cycle or a closed loop. So that we are calling that as a spanning tree. So the condition must be all vertices has to be covered and there should not be any cycle. So both the conditions are satisfied and three different spanning trees are obtained from the given graph. And out of these three graphs, the first tree T1 is having 
the weight as 6. Whereas T2 is having the total weight as 9 and T3 is having the total weight 8. So out of these three, the first tree T1 is having less weight which is 6. So this is the spanning tree with minimum weight. So we call this particular tree T1 as the minimum spanning tree for the given graphs. Now let us see what is Prem's algorithm. So as I told you before, Prem's algorithm aims at constructing a minimum spanning tree through a sequence of expanding subtrees. So how it works is provided a graph with set of vertices and edges. Out of the vertices available in the graph, one vertex is selected arbitrarily and this will be considered as the initial vertex. Then on each iteration, the algorithm expands the current tree. Then attach the, near, near, attach the nearest vertex that are not available in the existing tree. The algorithm stops once all the graph vertices have been included in the tree which is being constructed. So this is the algorithm or the pseudocode for the prems. So here the input is a weighted connected graph which is having the set of vertices P and set of edges E. And the output is the set of edges which is composing a minimum spanning tree. So the set of vertices can be initialized. Any vertex, initial, any one particular vertex can be taken arbitrarily and the adjacent vertices will be added on each iterations till all the vertices are included. And the condition, one more condition, it should not form a loop. And here, if you see this Prim's algorithm, the running time is very important in the analysis part. So since this graph is represented by its adjacency list and the priority queue is implemented using a minimum heap, the running time of the algorithm is big O of mod E log mod V in a connected graph. So mod E is nothing but the number of edges in a graph and mod V is the number of vertices available in the graph. Now let us see an example for Prim's algorithm. That is how Prim's algorithm works for a given graph so as to obtain a minimum spanning tree. Consider this example graph which is having the vertices A, B, C, D, E, F with assigned values in its edges. So our aim is to find out what are the tree vertices and what are the remaining vertices available and that can be shown in a graph. That is what are all the edges we are going to consider so as to construct the minimum spanning tree. So in each, I told you arbitrarily one particular vertex is considered to be the initial vertex. So that is the tree vertex. Let us consider the vertex A is the tree vertex. And the remaining vertices B, C, D, E, F are available. And something is there within the parenthesis you could find. The first thing is the vertex name comma next is the weight so what this shows is what is the outside vertex you have that is reachable from the inside vertex so if you take b of a comma 3 it means that the vertex b is reachable from a with 3 as a weight that is, it is adjacent 
to the B. That is, B is an adjacent vertex to the vertex A with the weight 3. So likewise, we have to update for C, D, E, F. If you take C and D, both are not adjacent vertex for E. Whereas if you go with E and F, both are adjacent to A. So for E, it is adjacent to A with weight 6. So we can update E as A comma 6. Likewise, F is adjacent to A with weight 5. So we can write F of A comma 5. So out of this remaining vertices, we have to consider by using Prem's algorithm that which is having a less weight and also adjacent to the tree vertex E. So if you see here, out of B, E, F, we can consider the minimum H having the value 3. So the vertex B is considered to be the tree vertex for the next iteration. Now we have taken this B of A comma 3 as the tree vertex for the current iteration. And here in the next step, once you have considered this tree vertex as B, we have to find out the remaining vertices and update its values. See, you could find the dark line in your diagram which shows that particular edge is considered for the spanning tree, minimum spanning tree. So in the remaining vertices C, D, E, F, we have to update the value respectively. So if you take C, C is adjacent to B with the edge value 1. So it is marked as C of B comma 1. And if you take D, D is not adjacent to B. So it is not, uh, remains the same. And if you take E, it is again not adjacent to B. So we should not disturb it. So previously, whatever value is available, we can keep as such. Then if you go with F, already F is, the previous iteration F is having A comma 5. Whereas now if you see, F is adjacent to B with weight 4. So when compared to the previous value, that is 5, this 4 is less. So what we can do is, we can update the F value with f of b comma 4. So the vertex f is reachable from b with value 4. Now after all these we have to pick the lowest value h. So out of these three again c is having the lowest cost h that is we have to consider B, C, which is having the weight 1. So now this becomes the tree vertex for the next iteration. So you could find the dark line between B and C. <clears throat> the next iteration, the tree vertex is C, adjacent to B with value 1. And the remaining vertices D, E, F. So we have to update the value for D, E, F. If you take C, from C, F and D are adjacent. So F is having B comma 4 already. Now if you take F, it is again 4. So you need not update for F. And if you go with the D, from C it is having 6. So previously no value is there. Now we can update with C comma 6. And for E, it is not adjacent to C. So there is no change in the previous value of E. Now out of these three vertex, we have the least value for F. So we can take F, B comma 
4 that is the HBF with weight 4 is taken. <coughs> so now for the next iteration this F become a 4 becomes the tree vertex that is the vertex F becomes the tree vertex. So the remaining vertices D and E so you have to update the value for D and E. So if you take D and E, so D is readable from F with value 5. So previously it was C comma 6. So when compared to that, now it is having less value so we can update. And if you go with vertex E from F, it has the weight 2. So Previously, it has from A and the weight has 6. So, when compared to that, now it is having less weight. So, we can update. So, after updating these two, out of these two remaining vertices, we have the lowest value for the vertex E. So, now the vertex E is considered to be the tree vertex. And the edge E and F with weight 2 must be considered. So you could find in the diagram E and F with 2 given as dark line. So we are taking E as the tree vertex. So the remaining vertex only possibility we have D. And so D f comma phi so only vertex d is available so as i told you before the minimum spanning tree must contain all the vertices covered from the given graph but it should not form a cycle so d is previously not included so we have to add this d also to the tree vertex so d with that is uh, the vertex d from f with Value 5 is taken as a tree vertex in the last step. So you could find a dark line connecting F and D with 5. So from this you can able to understand how we got, how we have used this Prem's algorithm to obtain the vertices. So we have started up with the vertex A and in each iteration 1, 1, vertex have been added up with the existing tree so as to satisfy the constraint that every vertex has to be included and it should not form a cycle and it should have a minimum weight so finally you could see the dark lined edges so all these edges if you see it covers all vertices, but there is no cycle anywhere. So, the cost of minimum spanning tree can be calculated by adding the edge values available in the minimum spanning tree. So, here the edge values are AB as 3, then BF4, BC1, then DF5, then EF2. So all these values will be added up. Finally, we got 15 as the answer, which is the cost of the minimum spanning tree. Now we will see Crystal's algorithm. So Crystal's algorithm is an, an, another algorithm which is used to, to solve the minimum spanning tree problem again for the given weighted connected graph with the set of vertices V and set of edges E. So this Kriskal's algorithm is very simple when compared to the Prim's algorithm. Here one thing you should remember in Kriskal's algorithm we are going to sort the edges available in the graph in the order of their weights that is in the increasing order of its weights. So after sorting the edges with increasing order of weights, we are going to obtain what edge 
to be included in the spanning tree and what h to be rejected so this is the criskels algorithm are the pseudo code given for the criskels so input again weighted connected graph and the output is the set of edges composing a minimum spanning tree then here so initially we are so making the sorting process after performing the sorting it is just checking whether the current edge is forming a cycle or not based on that that particular edge can be either accepted or it can be rejected if it does not form a cycle then the particular edge will be included if it forms a cycle then that particular edge will be rejected the running time of criskels algorithm will be mod e log mod e so and it is using an efficient union find algorithm this union find algorithm is nothing but the algorithm which is used to, to find whether the particular edge is forming a cycle or not now let us consider the same example for criskels algorithm we have assumed the same weighted and directed graph to find the minimum spanning tree but the algorithm to be used is criskels that's it so here the same diagram is given with the vertices and edges now let us see how this criskels algorithm is applied for this particular problem to find the minimum spanning tree so here previously we have seen tree vertex remaining vertex and how it is illustrated in the figure in case of prims algorithm whereas in criskels algorithm the edges has to be sorted first and the least cost edge will be taken into account then every edge has to be checked for the constraint it should have less cost as well as it should not form a cycle so here the sorted list of edges is provided in the first step so out of which the edge with weight 1 that is the edge bc with weight 1 is taken first so that is shown in the figure with dark line bc having the weight 1 so now this bc becomes the tree edge so in the next types iteration bc in the tree bc will be available and now in the remaining vertices in the remaining edges the second one is ef so ef is having the value 2 so you could find ef in dark line so we can consider this so it, since it does not form a cycle we can take this ef with weight 2 and now in the next iteration this ef becomes the tree edge so you could see here ef becomes the tree edge then the remaining sorted edges the third one we have ab so if you take ab it does not form a cycle so we can include this ab with weight 3 as a tree edge so it will be taken as the tree edge in the next iteration and the remaining sorted edges will be seen so the next highest value is bf with 4 so if you take bf again it does not form any cycle so this bf edge can be taken and this bf edge becomes the tree edge and it will be added up in the spanning tree so it is shown here the next cf so when you come to cf what happens so if you consider this is cf already we have an edge bf and bc if you take this cf what happens is it forms a cycle so criskels algorithm checks for the constraint it should not form a cycle so that this particular edge will be rejected so 
so it won't process that particular edge it won't include that particular edge into a tree the next is af and if you take af with weight 5 what happens already ab is taken bf is taken if again af is considered then what happens it forms a cycle so by seeing this the crystals algorithm will reject this edge af with weight 5 and next coming to df so df with weight 5 if you see df it does not form a cycle so it is considered by the crystal algorithm so it will be added into the tree edge so in the next iteration this will be added in the tree edge so you could find the dark line connecting df with weight 5 and next if you go with ae see at this point almost not almost every vertex in the graph has been included a b c d e f so it is not necessary to go with the remaining edges at all even though if you go with that remaining edges what happens if you take a e it forms a cycle if you take c d it forms a cycle if you take d e <coughs> it forms a cycle so these three edges are projected so up to this df only it is considered so finally what happens is the Kriskel's algorithm worked in the given graph and it has generated or it has constructed the minimum spanning tree under the condition all the vertices are covered as well there are no cycle so as like Prim's algorithm here also we can find the cost of minimum spanning tree which is nothing but the weights that are available in the edges of a minimum spanning tree has to be added and finally you will get a value which we call as the cost of minimum spanning tree we will continue the remaining distas and Hoffman's tree in the next session thank you